coal combustion waste in a power plant collectively make up the second largest industrial waste stream in all of the United States. They generate about 120 million tons of waste a year now. And that's enough coal ash to fill the boxcars of a train that stretches from Washington, D.C. to Melbourne, Australia. And that's just in one year. These wastes have concentrated levels of toxic heavy metals like lead, arsenic, cadmium, chromium, selenium. They also leach high levels of other pollutants like sulfates and manganese. All of this fly ash, bottom ash, boiler slag that these power plants produce and dumping it in coal mines, they've emerged as major ways that power plants get rid of their waste. Minefill is basically a coal ash dump or placement site for coal ash inside a coal mine. Filling mines with coal ash has spread across the country with many states looking at what the state of Pennsylvania has been doing these wastes have already been contaminating water supplies, surface waters, lakes, wetlands, streams, and groundwaters all over the United States for some time. On top of that, there's not been safeguards put in place to stop this contamination. The regulators uh, in the state of Pennsylvania who regulate mining are saying there's no evidence that they're contaminating the groundwaters or the surface waters from this practice. The Clean Air Task Force, back in 2003, launched a study of the monitoring data of Pennsylvania minefills. We decided the best way to try to address what the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection is saying was to look at their data. There's 120 of them that have been permitted in the state of Pennsylvania. We chose the sites uh, based on the amount of waste being dumped there, 10,000 tons, at least two down gradient monitoring points and five years of monitoring data were what we needed to look at these sites. We selected 15 sites that met those criteria. But what you see happening with this water, since they've started putting ash here at this site with the, the stated intention to raise alkalinity and reduce acidity, We've had higher arsenic measured here, higher lead measured here, higher cadmium, higher chromium, higher copper, higher nickel, higher aluminum, higher zinc than have, were ever measured in the baseline at this gob pile. My initial reaction was I don't want a power plant right here. I moved out of Pittsburgh, we lived in the city, we moved out to the country. I wanted to have my children surrounded by open space, green land, fresh air. And it became apparent to me that either the DEP or the applicant, the person that, was, that owns the site, there seemed to be some information missing. They didn't seem to want the public to know about. And I believe that that was the impact of the fly ash. And then we later learned how large that fly ash impoundment would be. Almost 90 million tons of fly ash coming to my little community. What Cat Lodge is doing is leading a, a group called the Residents Against the Power Plant that challenged the air permit that was granted for that plant barely after they had first been told about the proposed power plant and then challenged the Clean Water Act permit for the discharges from the plant and got some provisions put in there in that permit to require more monitoring for water pollution. And now they're demanding that the mining permit, which is what will have to be amended to, to allow all this ash dumping to occur in the Robinson Township in the Champion Mine, that that have safeguards that are outlined in our report and that are recommended by the National Research Council. There were lots of basic problems with the monitoring and with the lack of safeguards in place at these sites. They were monitoring usually from too few points. For example, uh, at the Ellingowan Mine, we were looking at a 13 million ton ash site and monitoring from, uh, for nine million of those tons from two monitoring points, both of which are in mine pools underneath these massive pits where they dump the ash. What we're looking at are huge volumes of water at these monitoring points that they're measuring these toxic levels of toxic metals in.
the National Research Council, the most esteemed scientific body of the land, an arm of the National Academy of Sciences, came out with a big report in 2006 that said that national regulations were needed. The state that had studied more than any other state in the country to make those determinations was Pennsylvania. We make a number of recommendations in this report, and they echo uh, many of the recommendations that the National Research Council made in its 2006 report. We want regulations in Pennsylvania, not just administrative guidelines. We want these regulations to do a better job characterizing the sites and the ash that's put in the sites. We want uh, requirements to isolate the ash from water, which is the reactive agent that causes ash to, to damage the environment. We want adequate monitoring at these sites. We want the monitoring to go on for long enough periods to tell what the ash is doing over the long run. If you want to turn your mine into an ash dump, you've got to put the money aside first to assure the public that lives around these sites that they're not going to be left holding the bag when you walk. That's just basic fairness. Nobody has the right to harm other people's water supply or property values uh, for profit. This report we believe demonstrates emphatically that there are basic flaws, numerous flaws, in the PADEP's mine filling program.